Thanks, Daniel. So nice to see your faces. Thanks for joining me. Happy birthday, Scarlett. <laughs> Woo. Okay, so I just wanted to uh, mention a few things from last week. I had, um, I had a few people ask me some questions about the apple pie making. Uh, so the first question was how much um, overlay do you leave uh, on the edge of your crust to turn it under to crimp? Um, so you don't need that much. Like I would say maybe even half of, of an inch for the top layer of pastry to turn under um, the bottom layer to crimp. Okay. Um, another question that I had was about baking a pie from frozen. So you would just take it out of the freezer, put it on a baking tray. I would suggest putting some um, aluminum foil on your tray. Um, put it in the oven at 400 degrees for about 30 minutes, um, and then reduce the temperature to 350 for about another 30 to 35 minutes until the mixture is uh, bubbling uh, on the inside. Okay. And then I think we can get ready on our gnocchi experience. All right. So there's a couple different kinds of gnocchi that you can make. Um, we are going to make one with ricotta cheese. Um, so there's a couple different ricotta cheeses that you can buy. Um, I just prefer to get the classic or I'll get the ultra smooth. Um, there are some, I know I put on the recipe online um, that you might need to drain it or press it. Uh, some ricotta cheeses can be quite, um, quite, quite wet. So if you were going to do that, then you would just use cheesecloth. Um, you would put it in a colander, the cheesecloth, and then put your ricotta on top. And then you would just gently squeeze the, the moisture out. Um, but we're, we're usually pretty good with a traditional ricotta or with the, um, the super smooth, okay? Um, we're gonna do it today in the food processor. Um, if you don't have a food processor, don't worry. You can just do it in a bowl by hand. So we're gonna put in one cup okay, of ricotta cheese. And then I've got in this bowl here, I've got our Parmesan cheese and our flour. And I also added a pinch of salt. And I'm gonna put in a little bit of pepper. And because we're using ricotta cheese, you could also, if you wanted to, um, add a little bit of lemon zest. It adds a really nice flavor. And then we're going to add in an egg yolk, okay? So it's best to use a room temperature egg to separate. They separate a little bit better. But don't throw out your egg white because you can use it for something else. And egg whites also freeze. So if you plan on making a meringue or an icing, then you've got some stored. Okay. So we're just going to put the lid on here. And then that's it. Easy breezy. Okay. So Chef Laura, there's a few folks that joined us a little bit oh. late. Okay. Um, so there were just three more people that joined us. Um, so maybe we can just fill them in, I guess, really yeah. briefly. And then that's the last time we'll play catch up. Okay, no problem. Uh, so what we did is we are making a ricotta gnocchi. So uh, what we did was we just used a food processor and we put in our, um, our ricotta cheese our egg yolk, Parmesan cheese, a little bit salt and pepper and some flour um, and just mixed it until it comes together, okay? Um, I was saying with the ricotta cheese that they do have different, um, different kinds that you can buy that are on the market. Um, in the recipe I did give, um, I had mentioned that you could line um, a colander and you could press or drain your ricotta cheese. Uh, most, you don't need to because they aren't as, as wet. Um, but if you, if you felt like it was a little, there was that layer of, um, water at the bottom, just don't use that part. Just use the, the curd that's on the top. And if you wanted to, um, and you were saying, oh my gosh, I don't have ricotta cheese. Um, you could actually make your own. So you can make your own if you're ambitious. Um, all it is, is milk. You bring it to a boil on the stove. 
you add one or two tablespoons of an acid, so um, an apple cider vinegar, white vinegar, lemon juice, and then you continue to cook and stir and you'll see the curd starting to form. So you just cook it until you get the curd size that you would like, and then you would strain it through cheesecloth as well. Okay. So what we're gonna do, is we're just going to put this in a stainless steel bowl and just put it in the fridge. And we're gonna chill this for about 30 minutes or so. Okay. Nothing to it. So you can see actually it's got some nice body. Okay. So what we're gonna be doing here is we're just letting it rest and we're letting the flour hydrate. All right, so let's pop this into the fridge. And then I'll show you what to do next. All right. Move all this stuff out of my way here. So in elapsed time, we've had our chill dough for 30 minutes. Okay. So it's nice and a firm dough. Some some people using the magic of, of television as well. I, I love the magic of I like this. <laughs> yeah. Becky, Beautiful. Grace, and Scarlett just showed their, their wonderful dough as well. Bravo. <laughs> okay. Let's see. So we're going to use some flour for our dusting surface. Okay, be liberal. And then we're just going to take half of our dough here. And then you're just going to roll it. It's kind of like Play-Doh. Okay, so nice, even pressure. All right. And this rolls really well when it's cold quite cold. And you just want to make sure that it's the same thickness. Like it's pretty even. Yeah. And if it's a little bit sticky, you can put a little bit of flour on your hands. How's everyone doing? Okay. So gnocchi actually um, is a really, really old food. Um, it's usually made with potatoes. And actually the Europeans um, didn't start making it with potato till about the 16th century. But before then the Romans um, actually used to make it with mixtures of squash and cornmeal. And, um, and then potatoes were introduced and they started using potatoes in their mix. You can make this with potato as well. Um, I find that the potato gnocchi can be a little bit more dense, uh, so a little bit more heavy in the belly, um, but you can use um, different kinds of potatoes. You can use a mixture of like a Yukon gold potato, they're quite starchy, and, um, and a, or you could make sweet potato. It's quite lovely. How's everyone's rolling? Pretty good? Chef Laura, I'm just gonna jump in. I, I wrote in the chat there, but I wanna make sure the others participating are aware. So uh, if you're wondering how Becky, Grace and Scarlett knew um, and had to have dough ready, 
Um, so we, we do post uh, Chef Laura's ingredients and recipe in advance uh, at oakville.ca by searching virtual programs. So that way you can get a little bit of a jump on maybe getting some of your items prepped before we start each week at seven o'clock. Absolutely. And if anybody has any questions, just feel free to shout out. It looks like everyone's doing a good job. What happens if you put too much flour on it? Uh, that's okay, just dust it off. Okay. <laughs> Is it not rolling, Becky? Um, it's coming along. Okay, because you can even just roll it a little bit like this if there's too much flour. There's this. Oh, Becky, I saw Becky's glasses were coated in flour. <laughs> it's all good. Good question. You don't want it to be too flat? Um, so it will look more like, like when you make a snake out of plaster seam. Okay. Got it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Once you get the hang of this, you can actually make this and have dinner on the table in about 45 minutes. Chef Laura, Grace and Scarlett are showing you their role. How's that? Amazing. Awesome job. Okay. Should I give you guys a few more minutes? Are we going to have to boil some water? We will be boiling some water. Yes. Okay. Should I start it? Sure. Chef Flora, are all your students this much of a pain in the butt? <laughs> no. Okay. I love no, the okay. questions. <laughs> yep. So if everybody wants to put on a pot of water when you get a second, um, just put a little bit of salt in the water. So I've got some, I've got some here at a simmer already. And there's lots of things that you can actually add to your gnocchi too. If you um, wanted to increase um, the flavor, you can add some fresh herbs in there, or again, you could add a little bit of the lemon zest. That's quite nice. Um, but there's many different sauces that you can make with your gnocchi too. It doesn't have to be a brown butter sauce. Um, you could use um, just a straight tomato sauce. Um, balsamic vinegar is also quite nice. Uh, you could add um, like pancetta or if you wanted to make it completely vegetarian, you could add um, some sauteed spinach and mushrooms. Okay, you guys ready? I'm gonna show you how to cut. Good, okay. All right, so if you have one of these, great. If this is called a bench scraper. If you do not have one, then that is totally fine. You can use a paring knife. So we'll use both. Okay, so paring knife. Or a bench scraper. Um, so what you're going to do is you're just going to cut in even pieces. So you want to try and get your pieces as even as possible because then they're going to cook the same amount of time in the pot. Okay. If your knife gets a little bit sticky, you can always put a little bit of flour on it too, and that will help it from sticking to your knife. Okay. So if you do have the bench scraper, you can just quickly cut your pieces as well. This is a really good tool in case you're looking for a, a stocking stuffer from Santa. Very versatile.
how's the cutting going coming? <laughs> All right. So another handy tool that you can get from Amazon is, um, is actually a gnocchi paddle. Um, and it just has little uh, ridges on it. Um, kind of looks like a washboard. If you don't have one, then that's a, oh, looks great. Looks good, looks perfect. Good job. So if you don't have one of these, that's totally fine. But if you happen to have one of these, then that's good too. You're just basically gonna roll your pasta on the board and then you're going to get oops you're going to get these nice lines in your pasta so I'll just you can use the board and it's quite quick so the reason why you're using the um using the board is because you want to create the ridges in there because it's in between the ridges is where the sauce is going to catch and then I'm actually just putting mine onto a baking tray lined with parchment paper if you don't have one of these, then that's okay. You can actually use a fork, okay? So you can use a fork and you, same idea. So you're still creating lines on your gnocchi, okay? Just to say, I suggested a fork because we don't have that thing and I got made fun of by the people in my house. Okay. A fork is brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So again, you just roll it on the tines of the fork. And remember, guys, practice makes progress. And it doesn't matter how they look because they're all going to get eaten and they're all going to be delicious. And these are great because you can actually um, you can actually put these on your baking tray, and you can put them in the freezer just as is and freeze them, and then you can pop them into a bag. Just making sure that you label and date. And then when you're ready to cook, then you just bring them out of the freezer and put them right into the boiling water. And and how long could we freeze these for, Chef? I might say a couple months. The nice thing about the ricotta and yaki too, it's um it's a little bit um, more airy. It's quite lovely. Can't wait to see all your work. It looks like someone has a bottle of wine on their counter. <laughs> Maybe the town needs to get a liquor license. Yeah, I don't know if that was on the, was that in the recipe? <laughs> I don't think it was in the recipe. I don't think it was in the, we'll let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever helps creation. That's right. A great thing too about having a bench scraper is that it's very quick in cleaning off your counter. And that's not going on the floor, just so you know, it's going into a garbage. <laughs> it's not a little of this, you know, with the kids. Uh, looks great, everybody. Oh, that looks awesome. Good job. 
Grace, it's hashtag pro skills at your house. Hey, oh, those look great. Luca, good job. Nice job, Luca. Bravo. Yeah, you want to talk? <laughs> they look awesome, guys. It looks like, is Gweno cooking as well? Gweno oh is at the first stage. Oh, no. Gweno's at stage one. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> We're a bit slow. <laughs> that's okay. No need to be sorry. <laughs> It will still work though, Rian, if you put it, if you do a little bit now, it just, it's better. I haven't put it, it hasn't gone in the fridge yet. Okay. You can still give it a go if you want. It's I'll better. I'll just go and uh, steal from Becky. It's okay. Okay. Rian, catch up, please. <laughs> At least I'm not drinking wine. No judgment here. <laughs> I thought I needed a rolling pin so I needed to get the wine out um so we put them in the fridge now uh no we're going to cook them oh okay. yep so if everyone can put on a pot of water with some salt everyone's got that going <laughs> I feel like Grace and Scarlett are like vets every time I look over they're waiting Okay, well, we're, well, while we have our pot of water on, we'll get started on maybe cutting our garlic, okay? So just like last week, we've got our wet dish cloth and we're gonna put that onto our workspace. I'm just gonna move these over here for a second, okay? Okay, and then we've got our cutting board that's gonna go right on top. So nice and close to your body. All right, so now it's nice and stable. Okay. Everybody good? So for those joining in late, uh, I know we're just letting some folks in as they get here. We are making ricotta gnocchi, and I hope I said that okay, with, uh, with Chef Laura Straff. So welcome. Thanks for joining me. So for our sauce, we are going to use one clove of garlic and we're going to use a couple sage leaves. So depending on how much you like it, you can use a little bit less or a little bit more. Okay. So to get the skin off your garlic, you can actually put it on your cutting board and using your knife, you can actually do a press and then it actually takes the, the papery skin right off. Okay, just like so, then we're ready to go. Okay, so you wanna have the flat surface down onto your cutting board. Oh, I've got one little piece here, let me get that off. Okay, and then we're just going to mince the garlic, okay? So again, making sure that your thumb is tucked around the back, okay? So that no one, no one gets hurt. And then we're going to just do some nice thin slices of garlic. Okay. I'm just gonna turn mine and just do them a bit smaller. Don't feel like you have to rush this step. We've got lots of time. If you like garlic, then please feel free to put in more. Okay. I'm just going to move that off to the side. Now, a trick when you're cutting your sage or you're cutting basil, um, if you actually layer your leaves on top of each other, like so, and then you can actually roll them. Here, I'll turn it this way so you can see. So you can actually roll them. So it kind of looks like this. 
And then you can use your knife and then you can do nice fine slices. You can do all of them at the same time. So then they look like so. Okay. I'm gonna give mine another rough chop. Okay. Everybody good? Okay. So then on our stove here, we've got um, a skillet with um, six tablespoons of butter. Um, I prefer to use unsalted butter, but if you don't have unsalted, that's fine. Just use, um, you can use salted. Um, you're gonna put that on just a, on a medium heat. Okay, let's see here. And we're just gonna melt our butter. So when you are making a browned butter, um, what happens is um, it's gonna be um, a little bit deeper in color. You're gonna get a nutty smell to it. Um, what's happening is you're just watching um, for the, the clarified butter will actually sit on the top and what's on the bottom that's making it brown is the milk solids in the butter. So we don't want that to burn. So this is um, where you have to kind of just keep a little bit of a close eye to make sure that you're not gonna burn your butter and you'll, you'll know by the, the smell um, if, it's, if it's burnt. So we just want it to be brown, okay? So we're just going to melt the butter. And then it's going to start changing a little bit. So this is a really quick dinner idea. If um, even if you have your mix already in the fridge, it's quick on the table. Have a salad ready. Again, this is a great way to use up vegetables in your fridge, even if you wanted to add some sauteed vegetables on top or rapini. Okay, so we're starting to boil here a little bit. And then I've got my water at a simmer. So it will be pretty quick. Everybody okay? Okay. So we keep the butter on low, right? Um, I would say medium, Becky. Okay, medium. So it's looking like this, it's starting to bubble. Is this dinner for anyone or is it just a snack? <laughs> I gave a pre-dinner so nobody would be too hungry and cranky. Oh, that's a good idea. It's almost not fair to let just the sound of butter grizzle like that for so long without adding food to it. <laughs> I'm just gonna give this a stir. We're good. Come in. This is the, the situation of a wash pot never boils. So what are, what, are, what are we looking for here, Laura? So um, actually, um, it's just starting to brown. I don't know if people can see, but we're starting to get a little bit of coloration on the bottom. And we're starting to get a bit of a nutty smell. So even if you can wash a little bit, you can actually smell how it's um, how the smell has changed from your butter, and you can see that it's um, st it's starting to brown. I don't know if you can see the brown bits in there. Can see that? 
So this is what we're looking for. So I'm just gonna turn it down just a bit, but I'm gonna keep going for a, a couple more seconds, but you can see how it's browned here. This is exactly what we're looking for. Okay, that's the milk solid starting to, to um, brown. All right. Were we supposed to put our sage in? Not yet. Okay. But if you did, that's okay. No, I didn't. Okay. We're gonna take it off the heat and then we'll put the sage in. <laughs> mm, smells good. I love that smell of um, brown butter. Okay, so I'm going to be turning my heat right off because I'm at the point where it is good to go. And then at this stage, what I'm going to do is, so the heat is off and I am going to add my sage and my garlic. So does it make a difference, Laura, if you have like an induction stove or a... Like I know that you've taken it off your heat, but I have an induction stove. Will it stay too warm or would that still be okay? No, that's the brilliant thing about an induction stove is that it stops cooking immediately. Okay, what about like a coil stove? Same kind of thing. A coil stove, okay. if you have a coil stove, I would suggest you take it off the burner completely. Okay. So what we're doing here is we are doing some non-aggressive cooking of the garlic and the sage because we don't want those things to burn. Okay, so right now it is off heat. It's just cooking in the residuals heat from the, um, from the melting. And then we're going to put our pasta, um, our pasta or our gnocchi into our pot. Okay, everybody okay? All right, good job. All right, so we have our water. You want your water at a simmer. I don't know if you guys can see this. I'm just gonna turn it up a tiny bit more just so that we're at a little bit of a low boil. Okay, so Fresh pasta and fresh gnocchi does not take long to cook, okay? So what we're doing here is we're just gonna put it in and it's gonna to start to float to the surface and it's gonna take about three minutes to cook. Okay. All right. So if you don't feel comfortable just using your pan and, and putting it in, you can just use a slotted spoon. Sometimes the water comes back up, so just be careful that you don't burn yourself. I'm just gonna give it a bit of a stir just so that they don't stick to the bottom. Okay, and then we just wait. So is the mark of these being finished when they rise or is it just three minutes true? Uh, just when they rise to the surface. Okay. I'm just gonna do the light stir and let everything sticking. Mm, how does your butter smell guys? Does it smell as delicious as it does here? Even if you wanted to just do a straight pan fried gnocchi, it's quite delicious as well. It's just. Someone came in with audio there and turned it off. Oh, it's Grace and Scarlet. Or Scarlet. I, I don't know which one's, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so it's coming. Okay. 
Does everybody have theirs in the water? Oh, bravo. Looks good. Now, because we're going to be using ours right away, um, I'm not going to put mine into a cold water bath, but if you are making yours ahead of time, then what you can do is um, you can cool it down to uh, stop the cooking process um, by putting it into um, a bowl with ice and water and then making it really, really, really cold. And then you're basically shocking your, your gnocchi um, so that it stops cooking. All right. So you can see mine are here floating at the top. So I'm just going to give this another 20 seconds or so, and then we're going to put it into our sauce. So I'm going to turn my burner back onto low. Okay, and my pasta, it, my gnocchi is done. Everybody see that it's floating up at the top? Okay, so I'm just gonna use a slotted spoon and I'm gonna be putting it right into my pan just because ideally we'd be eating this right away. Okay. And then we're just going to add a couple spoons of the thirsty water. Maybe two or three. Okay, we're just going to put that right into our pasta or our gnocchi. Okay. And then we're just going to toss to coat. Okay. And then we're just going to cook this off for a few minutes. Make sure everything is nice and coated. Okay. And then we are going to put in a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Chef Laura, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being very healthy, one being not healthy, how healthy is this meal? Well, I guess you're getting um, a good fat. You're yes. getting a protein from the cheese and the egg. You're getting a dairy from your cheeses. <laughs> I like the way you think. This is <laughs> everything this is in moderation, it. right? Yeah. Well, and, I mean, moderation. It looks like there's a bowl of butter boiling. <laughs> well, and you know what? This is actually to be considered a side dish, not as a full meal. I agree wholeheartedly. Oops, we're just okay, then we're just going to sprinkle about maybe two or three tablespoons of Parmesan cheese in here. And then we're ready to plate. That's it. So nowadays we would actually just use this as a side dish, but um, it was uh, back in in the in the early times they actually used to use this. Um, in a lot of non-wealthy communities because it was very inexpensive to make and quite filling. It looks lovely. It looks like something I would pay substantial amounts for in a restaurant. Now, Daniel, you can just do it at home. 
<laughs> or just come to work. Or just come to work. Yeah. On Wednesdays. Yes. Oh, looks great, Cass. Looks like Becky's going to show you her. Oh, very nice. Oh, looking good. That's a lot. Nice job. We doubled it. Doubled Back. it, nice. <laughs> Looks awesome. Does anyone else have any have any of their uh, their pans that they want to share? Grace and Scarlett, they're already eating. Like I said, always ahead of the game. <laughs> Luca, I know you were you were working. How are we doing? <laughs> I'm, I should be looking at my camera, but I just, that's okay. Oh, good. Nice work. I think we saw there Luca and Gweno were also cooking. I don't know if they've caught up, but I hope it's gone very well. So Laura. Yes. It's Heather here. So I Matthew, and I, Matthew and I are doing it, but we want to have it for tomorrow. Yep. So we put it in the ice water. Yep. Now, how would you suggest storing it till tomorrow? Um, I would just put it on a parchment lined baking tray. Okay. And just put it in the fridge. Okay. And put a piece of parchment over top. We can do that. Yeah. Next time even too, Heather, if you wanted, you could um, uh, just make the dough and then freeze it. Right. Yeah, I considered that and then we sort of <laughs> we, all, we wanted to keep going. <laughs> How did it turn out? Uh <laughs> Matthew and I we 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 got by. <laughs> okay. I'm sure I'm sure it's gonna be delicious. It will be. It'll be good. It's not too bad. How do we know if Let's it's see. oh Luca, that looks so good. Luca, oh, you come back awesome. Home. I know where you live. <laughs> <laughs> so off. How do we know if it's done in the pan? Sorry, um, I missed that part. You're just nope. You're just cooking it until it's coated. Oh, okay. We're good. Then you're good. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. Thanks for joining. Okay. Mama. No, she's not there. <laughs> okay. Well, um, Chef Laura. Now that everyone is starting to wrap up. Is, um, is there anything that you can tease towards next week's um, next week's recipe or is that still in the works? That is still it that is still in the works. Okay but we'll, keep, we'll keep you posted. It looks like Gweno has come back online. Have we given up you're on the couch? <laughs> Maybe the dough is just filling. We, we left it in the fridge. Oh good. Okay. Hi Leah for tomorrow. Oh perfect. So we now know what to do. Oh, good, good. <laughs> well, thanks for joining everyone. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. <laughs> okay, Thank well then so we'll meet everybody. Thanks Thank so you much guys. for joining. If Thank you, Laura. If it tastes great, it's because of you, Chef Laura. <laughs> it's horrible, it's because Thank of- Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, okay well. Can we call Glenn? <laughs> it sounds like people have wrapped up. Uh, so thank you guys so much. I'm starting to see the thank yous come in the comments section. Um, I can smell it from the other room. I'm very much looking forward to, to trying it. And thank you guys so much for, for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next Wednesday at 7 p.m. for the love of cooking with Chef Laura Strath. And for those of you who are uh, feeling up to it, tomorrow morning we have chair yoga in the same place. So we hope to see you then as well. Thank you so much. Bye now, Laura. Bye, everyone. Bye.